You know those negative self-talk scripts that keep going through your head? Well, today we're going to look at ways that we can compassionately work with them in four steps. We're going to recognize them, we're going to challenge them, we're going to reframe them, and we're going to meet them with compassion. So join me as we find a way to compassionately hold our negative self-talk. Okay, so the first step we have to do is we have to recognize our negative self-talk. To recognize our negative self-talk, we have to do two things. The first one is to have awareness of our negative self-talk patterns. And the second one is to capture our negative thought. So we gain awareness by being mindful of our thought patterns. When am I more critical of myself? Is something going on? Am I around certain people? Am I viewing something on social media or the internet? You might find that certain situations are more likely to trigger a negative thought pattern. So for this video, let's play with a negative thought pattern of I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough as a parent, I'm not good enough in my job. I'm not creative enough for my future little bambino. I'm not maybe good at baseball. I don't know. Becoming aware of these thoughts, that's our first step in being able to manage them. So now we're starting to get aware of them. And what's the next thing we can do to help ourselves in this recognizing stage? And that is to capture these thoughts. And there's no better way to capture something than by writing it down. So you can put it in your phone, you can put it in your notes app, you can put it in your journal. So you can just start to notice when are these thoughts more prevalent? Because maybe it's attached to worry or anxiety about a situation that's coming up or something that already happened. When we keep a daily journal of our thoughts, you know, and it just has to be bullet points, we can refer back to it at the end of the week and then we can start to get themes. We can start to get the patterns and that can really help us to unlock and capture these negative thoughts. The second thing we wanna do is we wanna challenge this negative thought. And here's how we do that. The first thing we ask is, is this true? Is this negative thought that I'm thinking true? So we ask for validity. We want proof that it's true. This helps us see things more clearly because a lot of times our negative thoughts are based on assumptions and distortions. One of the books that I've really liked regarding this is Byron Katie's loving what is. She has the simple philosophy of the four questions and the four questions are, one, is it true? Two, can I absolutely know that it's true? Three, how do you react when you think that thought? And four, who would you be without that thought? Again, that's from Byron Katie's book, Loving What Is. So again, I'm gonna go with my example of the grandchildless grandma and work with my uh, grandchild who is playing baseball. So if they come to me and they say, but Grams, I'm no good at this. And I'll say, can we know that that's true? And we would look back at other games and say, hey, but wait a minute, remember last game and you caught that ball in the outfield and then remember like two or three games before that and you had that hit and you got to run to first base or simpler than that it might be remember all the fun that you have with mommy or daddy when you go out and you practice remember that feeling that you get when you come inside and you've got your gear it's adding 
other aspects of it that aren't the home run, that aren't the winning game, that are the little 1% change that can combat that thought of, I'm not good at this. So what we're doing there is the second part of the challenging the thought is we're reframing it. We're allowing ourselves to look at it in a different way because remember, we believe what we think. And so we have to really work with our thoughts because they're more powerful than we ever knew. So can we change, I'm a failure or I suck at this to, okay, I got more to learn, but I'm improving. And the final thing that we always want to do is we want to bring in self-compassion for ourselves. And this means just treating yourself with the same kindness that you would a friend, a family member, an animal. So what is kindness? It's being able to speak to yourself in an encouraging and gentle way, offering soft reminders that it's okay not to be perfect. So for example, if you're feeling down about not being good enough, then remind yourself that you're learning and that you're doing the best that you can. And other things we can do for self-compassion are some exercises like some short little meditations, maybe some breathing exercises, holding a hand on your heart and a hand on your belly and reminding yourself that you are loved, that you are okay, that you're safe, and that you're enough. That's also practicing affirmations. One exercise that you can do is write a letter to yourself. One way to do this is imagine you're writing from the voice of a supportive friend, and that way you might be able to get more into an understanding and compassionate place with yourself. I think the key is to really monitor ourselves. I was listening to a podcast last night, and it's one that I really, really like. And the host brought on a guest, and the guest was talking about parts work and how we interact with ourselves inside. I could still hear these glimmers of negative slams, even as she was talking about how she had worked through it. And so it squeaks out, and even though we might not hear it and think we're doing better, other people might hear it. And we might cover it up as saying, well, I'm just joking, are we? So try these things this week. So we recognize, we challenge, and we offer self-compassion to our negative thoughts in order to reframe them and notice the patterns that are maybe ruling our lives. These are small things that you can do that really add up to a big difference. And you can notice the difference in your emotional well-being, your relationships, your mental well-being, and in your heart space. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a like, maybe a comment of which part resonated most for you or what you're going to work on this week. And if you're new to me, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? Because I do videos like this each week about emotional healing, and I'd love to have you be part of my community. Take good care and I'll see you real soon.